Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education, the kingdom of knowledge. Uh, we will talk about right triangles today. Well, uh, obviously we start with definition, and uh, I, I'm sure everybody knows that the right triangle is the triangle which has one right angle, 90 degrees, and uh, from the terminological standpoint, the side uh, which is uh, opposite to this 90 degrees angle is called hypotenuse, and uh, two other sides are called legs. That's a short name. There is a more scientific name, if I can say so. It's catatus. Catatus. And in plural, when you're talking about two sides, it's cateti. That's plural. All right, that's terminology. Uh, that, that's it for a while for this terminology, nothing more than that. Um, now, first of all, you remember this little theorem which we have proven in some other lecture about exterior uh, angle of a triangle that it is greater than any other angle, uh, interior angle, not uh, supplemental with it. So exterior angle obviously will be 90 degrees as well here. And since it's greater than any interior not supplemental with it, it means that two other angles of the right triangle are acute. So one right angle 90 degrees and two others are less than 90 degrees, called acute. Um, okay, now let's uh, talk about something which seems to be unrelated to right triangles, but in, in theory it is, it, it is really very much part of the theory. Here it is. Let's consider you have a line and point outside of this line. Now, uh, first of all, from uh, axioms of Euclid, you know that there is one and only one perpendicular. Uh, if it's more than one perpendicular, there is an axiom about parallel lines which will be uh, broken. So, one and only one perpendicular. Now, so the first property of this perpendicular, which I would like to discuss, is the fact that it is shorter than any other segment which, can, which connects the same line with the same point with this, with this line. Um, so, if this is 90 degrees, then any other segment would be longer than the perpendicular. Okay. Um, the second theory which I would like to talk about is that if we have two different segments on different on different distance from the point where perpendicular uh, actually is uh, projecting, then if the point is further from this base, then the segment connecting this point would be longer as well. So the further we go, the longer this segment uh, actually becomes. Intuitively, it's you know quite obvious, uh, but let's do it in a more rigorous way. Well, first of all, let's talk about PA and PV. Um, another theorem which was proven in one of the prior lectures, uh, where I was discussing sides and angles within the triangle and their relative dimensions, we were discussing the fact and actually proved that in a triangle against a bigger angle lies a bigger side. So in any triangle, if this angle, this one, is bigger than this, then 
this line is this set, this side is bigger than this side. Now, we have proven that, and we are going to use this particular um, theorem as well. So, two theorems we are going to use. One about exterior angles, that exterior angle is greater than any interior not supplemental with it. Like in this case, this exterior angle is greater than this and greater than this. And the second theorem is that in any triangle, opposite to bigger angle lies a bigger side, like in this particular case. Now, that's basically um, all we need to discuss this particular, uh, these particular properties. Well, first of all, PAB, triangle PAB. Now, obviously, it is the right triangle since PA was a perpendicular, so it's a 90 degrees angle. And as um, I pointed before, all other angles in this triangle are acute, less than 90 degrees, which means that the angle PAB, the right angle, is bigger than angle PBA, acute angle. And since against bigger angle, we have the, uh, the side uh, which is bigger. Now this is bigger than this because the PB, P, PB lies opposite to right angle, 90 degrees, and PA lies opposite to an acute angle, PBA. So the bigger angle, the bigger side uh, opposite it. The smaller angle, the smaller side. So no matter what kind of point B is chosen, if it's not uh, coinciding with A, if it's a real triangle, right triangle, then this line, PB, which is not a perpendicular, will always be longer than the perpendicular line, uh, I should say segment, uh, PA. So, um, there is some other formulation, so to speak, of the same property. Um, we used to talk about the distance between two points, which is the length of the segment, which connects these two points. So the length is basically a distance. Now, if we do not have two points, but something a little bit more complex, let's say we have a point and a line. Now, what is the distance from point to a line? Well, it's not obvious from the first um, uh, glimpse, but uh, it, there is a definition for this. Um, the distance is basically the length of the perpendicular to this line, by definition. Now, but why did we choose this particular distance? Well, the answer is because this is the shortest distance from this point to any other uh, point on the line. And in general, if we are talking about a distance between a point and any other object, then the definition is choose the point which is uh, which belongs to this particular object and which is closest to our point, and the length of this particular segment would be, by definition, there is nothing to prove about, um, will be the length, will be the distance between a point and whatever the object is. So if this object is a straight line, then it's a perpendicular, because the perpendicular is the shortest distance. Now, if you have two objects, there is also a concept of the distance between these two objects. Again, we have to choose two points, and uh, we have to choose them in such a way that this segment has the shortest lengths among all other segments which connect any other pair of points belonging to these two objects. So the shortest distance is the distance between the two closest points which belong, each one belongs to its own, uh, its own object. All right, so we have proven that the perpendicular is shorter than any non-perpendicular line. Now, if you have two non-perpendicular lines, then the one which falls further from the perpendicular would be uh, longer. How to prove it? 
Well, actually, uh, it, it, it's also the same simple uh, logic which we used before. Let's consider triangle PBC. Now, we know that um, exterior angle, again, exterior angle, is always greater than any interior uh, which is not supplemental with it. So, if you consider this interior angle or this interior angle in the triangle PBC, they both are smaller than this PBA. But this angle, as we know, is uh, acute because it belongs to a right triangle, which means that the supplemental angle, this one, is obtuse. Acute is less than 90 degrees. Sum is supposed to be 180, since these two angles are supplemental to each other. Since this is less than 90, then this is greater than 90. Okay? So, it looks like this acute angle is greater than this one, which means this is also acute, less than 90. But this angle is greater than 90. What's following uh, from this? That this angle, PBC, is greater than this angle, PCB. And opposite to the bigger angle, this one lies the side, which is bigger than the one opposite to a smaller angle, which is this one. So that's basically the, the proof that the further uh, point where this particular segment falls on the line, the bigger um, the, uh, the length of the segment will be. Well, there is one little thing which we actually missed in this particular proof. What if the point B lies on the opposite side, B prime? So C is on one side, B is on another side. We cannot really make the same logic if we will consider B prime instead of B. Well, the answer is very simple, actually. Let's just reflect um, back, the, uh, back to the side where, 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 this side, where this point C is located. So if uh, A, B prime uh, has certain lengths, we just put exactly the same lengths on this side, it will be A, B. And it's very simple to prove that these two uh, sides, PB prime and PB, are equal to each other. Why? Because these two triangles are equal. You have a side, which is uh, the one which they share. This is, by construction, exactly the same as this. AB prime is equal to AB, and both angles are right. 90 degrees. So it's a side angle side. Triangles are uh, congruent and therefore the length of the PB prime is equal to PB. And then we continue basically the logic which we have already went through that the PB is shorter than PC. And what's very important obviously is that if AB prime is shorter than AC, then the B will also be closer to the A. That basically proves it. All right. So now that's all I wanted to talk about uh, uh, perpendicular and non-perpendicular lines between <clears throat> between a point and and the line. Now uh, we are still talking about right triangles, and uh, what's more important about triangles than theorems about their congruence? All right, so let's talk about congruence between two different right triangles. Certain things are basically following from the general uh, theorems about uh, congruent triangles, or axioms, actually. Now, you remember we have three uh, major statements about congruent triangles, general triangles. Side angle side, which is, by the way, an axiom in a more rigorous uh, Hilbert system. Then we have angle, side, angle. And we have side by side, 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 side. These are theorems. Now, how is it applicable to right triangles? 
And what do we know about right triangles? Obviously, we know that one angle is 90 degree. So, immediately from this, what follows is that if you have two legs of one triangle uh, congruent to two legs another triangle, then triangles are congruent. Why? Because the angle between them is 90 degree. So you immediately have, um, have to basically use the side angle side theorem, and the angle is 90 degree. Sides are two legs, two cathety, if I may say so. So this is a leg, this is a leg, and this is hypotenuse, right? So leg and leg, and angle between them, that's basically exactly what side angle side theorem is. Now, fine. So that's the obvious and very, very trivial um, statement about right triangles. Another very trivial statement is that if um, a leg plus an acute angle adjacent to this leg, which is this one, so we are considering this leg and adjacent angle, which makes, which is between this particular leg and the hypotenuse. So if these two elements are congruent, then obviously using this theorem, angle, we know about 90 degrees, side and angle, uh, if they are congruent, then again using this theorem, we have um, uh, this particular statement about uh, right triangles. Again, in these general cases, we needed three elements uh, to be congruent to each other. In case of right triangles, since we already know that one element, an angle, is 90 degree, is therefore it's congruent uh, in all right triangles, that's why we need only two elements, like leg, leg plus leg, or leg plus acute angle, which it makes with the hypotenuse. Now, there are less trivial um, statements, theorems actually, about um, right triangles, which are, which are also true, and we're going to prove them. Here they are. Let's say you have a hypotenuse and one leg equal to each other. Uh, so congruent triangles, uh, to, to prove the congruence um, between these two triangles, um, we basically have to prove that um, either an angle is equal to uh, an angle between them or or something else, and then we can just refer to a general uh, to a general case. All right, so let's think about how can we prove that if uh, two particular uh, elements, hypotenuse and hypotenuse, are um, equal to each other, then hypotenuse and the left are congruent to each other. Then the whole thing is. Uh, uh, it is basically true. Well, very simple. Um, for convenience, I would like actually just to have my drawing a little bit more looking like the previous one. Let's use not this leg, but this leg. All right. So let's consider we have this leg congruent to this one and hypotenuse congruent to hypotenuse. How can we prove? that this particular leg, the second leg, is also uh, congruent to this one. Very easy. Let's go back to our uh, line and point outside it. What we can do is we can have this particular triangle positioned here. Now, this is a perpendicular, right? This is a non-perpendicular line. So this is our leg, and this is our hypotenuse. Now, 
So what we have right now here is that hypotenuse is equal to hypotenuse. Now, how can it be that if we will put this triangle into exactly the same position, which means this point and this point will coincide, and let's say that this point will not coincide. So if this is A, B, C, this is X, Y, Z, then this is A and X, this is B and Y. Now this is C, and let's say Z is projecting something further. Now, how can BZ not be equal to, uh, to, to BC? Well, it can't, because as we know from the explanation which we went through before, the further the point is from the point where the perpendicular falls, the bigger this particular segment is. Which means that if Z is further from B or Y from C, then the XZ would be uh, longer than, than AC. They cannot be equal. So if they are equal, it means that Z should really coincide with C, and that's why this particular leg is exactly the same for both triangles. So that brings us into uh, a statement that basically the three uh, sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle. And that then we can use the general theorem. So everything is basically going back to the original, to the beginning of this particular lecture, when I was considering a point and a line, a perpendicular, and a couple of other segments connecting this point with, line, uh, with points on the line. Now, so this is something which we have just proven, which is less obvious, less trivial than to prior uh, statement. So this is what? This is uh, leg, leg plus hypotenuse. All right. Now, are there any other interesting uh, statements about um, congruent right triangles? Well, there is one more. Um, as I was saying before, for right triangles, we are using only two elements because we know about the angle 90 degree, which is always uh, the same in all right triangles. So this is just another uh, example of um, of the theorem where only two elements of the right triangle are needed to be congruent to have the whole triangle uh, triangles congruent. Now another is if you have a hypotenuse plus one of the acute angles. All right, so let's do exactly the same thing. Let's say this is our triangle, this is hypotenuse, and this is an acute angle. Now, um, that's all we know about these two triangles. So the hypotenuses are the same, and acute angles are the same. Is that sufficient for uh, two right triangles to be congruent to each other? Well, the answer is yes. Now, how can we do it? Well, very easily. Let's do it this way. Let's again, this is ABC. And this is x, y, z. And we will try to bring them together using the following technique. We will have this angle somewhere. And first, we will bring into this angle this particular uh, triangle. So this is x somewhere. And this is y. And this is the right angle, right? Now let's bring this particular triangle, starting again from the hypotenuse, 
Now, since hypotenuse AC is congruent to XZ, so A and X would be um, would coincide each other, right? Now, um, now what we will do is uh, we will uh, try to find the location of the point B. All right. Um, where can B be located? Well, let's assume that B is not coinciding with uh, the point Y. It's somewhere else. So the BC, let's consider BC is longer than YZ in this particular case. So, and then we will connect them this way. So the triangle A, now this is Z and C, right? False. So the triangle ACB on this particular picture is uh, congruent to this triangle because that's how we uh, basically construct it. We have a side, side, we have an angle, angle, and we have another side, another side. So the triangle ABC on this picture is exactly the same, exactly congruent to triangle ABC here. Now, if that's true, then this angle is supposed to be also 90 degree, right? This is 90 degree, so this is 90 degree. And what do we have right now? We have two different perpendiculars from the same point A outside of this line, which are falling into two different points. We cannot have two different perpendiculars from the same point to the same line. If you, as you remember, it contradicts some um, Euclidean um, axioms about parallels. So basically, this is uh, the proof that B and Y should coincide, since there is only one perpendicular. And that's why the BC is congruent to YZ, and then the whole uh, triangles are congruent to each other because of the side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So, we have proven two different uh, theorems about right triangles, which are um, slightly different, obviously, than three original um, congruence theorems, axiom and theorems, uh, about the general triangles. And in both cases, we are using only two elements uh, from the right triangle, not three, as in this case. So, in this case, it's leg and hypotenuse, or hypotenuse and an acute angle. Now, two others, which I have already specified before, are actually trivial. I mean, I can put it here as well. So these are non-trivial. Trivial ones are uh, when two legs uh, congruent to each other, because the angle between them is 90 degrees, so we have side angle side, and um, leg plus acute angle, which it makes with the hypotenuse, because this is actually angle side angle. Because on this side of this leg, you have a straight, you have a right angle, so you have right angle, leg, and, and acute angle. So these are uh, non-trivial and trivial relative to these um, theorems about uh, congruent right triangles. Um, well, that's probably about it as far as the theory of right triangles is. I might actually have some, some, have some, some more information which I will include into notes um, for this lecture. And uh, obviously, you are invited to visit unisor.com, where this lecture um, is recorded and there are notes on it, uh, exercises, exams. And I would uh, like parents to pay special attention to this website as the source of um, uh, not only educational materials for your uh, children, students, but also for you to be able to control the educational process. Because you, the parents, are basically the customers of the system. 
and you can enroll your, ch your children in one of the programs. Um, you can uh, control how their progress actually is, is, is going, because there are exams which they should take uh, and uh, score based on these exams. So you can uh, see the score, what exactly your child has uh, accomplished on any particular topic. Um, and uh, again, it's up to you to basically consider this particular topic finished or should be repeated and the exam should be retaken, etc., etc. So it's all up to you. Um, okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much.